My name is Alonda Carter and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM, that's anti-multi-level marketing videos. And on occasion, I dip my toes into true crime. But if you think about it, isn't multi-level marketing criminal? And I want to be clear on semantics because people get all twisted over this. I use multi-level marketing, but it has many names like direct sales, network marketing, social selling, all kinds of things. But I'm just sticking with multi-level marketing so that we're clear on those semantics. In today's video, we're going to go over a number of things that, as I started thinking about it, that we just don't know about Shannon Watt and therefore Chris Watts's Thrive Business because it's never really your business because you're an independent contractor, but everybody, you know, when you're in it, in MLM, you refer to your business and working your business. And I know I did, and I know many other people are doing that right now and have done so in the past. And I want to give a shout out to my most recent patron, Christy. Thank you so much for your support. You have no idea how much that means to me. And thank you, all of you who choose to watch my videos. I really appreciate it. Now, let me be clear on this. This is not a Shanann bashing fest or anything like that. I am actually taking her story and sharing with you how MLM impacts people because you could take her out of the picture, stick in another Hunbot, a different company because you remove Thrive and people act in much the same way when they're involved in multi-level marketing. 
What happened to her and her children is absolutely tragic. I know she was an imperfect human being. I'm imperfect because I'm human. We're all imperfect. Everybody has their flaws, but she did not deserve what happened to her. Since I've been making anti-MLM videos for about a year and a half as of this filming, I'm very keenly aware of the tactics that are used. And it's not just in one MLM, it's across the board. In my past videos, just about the Watts case alone, because I've told part of my story, I've done my best to explain how people become indoctrinated into multi-level marketing. And it's as if your personality changes and you start behaving in a different way because you're surrounding yourself with all these like-minded people. They all believe in the dream that MLM sells. And I just call that your MLM personality. You start behaving in ways that you never have. And you never would think that you would behave that way, but you do because you see what other people are doing and then you start emulating it and you hear what other people are saying because you're in that bubble where everyone believes and you just become a different person. Everything Shanann did to sell Thrive, I've done myself when I was a Beachbody hun or something similar to it. And there's people right now doing those same sort of things and people who do create anti MLM content like myself. And if they were in an MLM, they can all relate to, you know, her putting out this perfect image of everything, the perfect family, the perfect, this all smiles, everything's great because that's what you do when you're in multi-level marketing. It's part of the territory. So what I'm trying to say is Shanann was not unique in her behavior whatsoever when it comes to multi-level marketing. But I think we can leverage this as a teachable moment, if you will, and learn from it. Please do not send any hate to anyone involved in multi-level marketing, anyone that's connected with Thrive, to any of the families or friends that are connected to the Watts case. Editing Alonda here, I forgot to say this. This video is based on my experience, research, and opinion. Please, as always, do your own research. Also be kind to each other and to be in the comment section. To kick off this video, I'm going to read an excerpt from the discovery. And when I go through the discovery, it becomes very evident to me that people just had a misconception of Shanann's success, if you will. Shanann put out there the lifestyle because really that's what you're selling when you're new. Shanann put out there the lifestyle because really that's what you're selling when you're involved in MLM. And I'm going to take you down memory lane just for a moment. I was in some group. I don't even remember what it was, but I'd always see the same girl and she was as cute as a button sitting in a Mercedes. And then there was some sort of like caption that went along with it. It was always that same picture. And as I think about that, and I think about Shanann, it's like, you know, it could have been this girl doing exactly what Shanann has done. You know, when we see her post, when we see her videos, it's really all very much the same. That's my point. MLM sells you on that dream life, time freedom, financial freedom. So you can get away from that J-O-B just over broke and leave that regular job. But in reality, what people don't see is when the camera goes off when the post is over, how someone is like, you know, like a duck on a pond, how they look all smooth and everything, but underneath there's little legs are just a going. That's what it's like when you're in multi-level marketing behind the scenes, you're just going nuts, trying to get everything, you know, to stay afloat, trying to keep that Jenga tower up. And that's what Shanann was doing. Now there is a tiny sliver of a fraction of people who do make money. And, you know, since I've done so much of the research and looking into different people who are leaders and that sort of thing, the only thing I can really conclude is that just like Shanann, just like me and so many other people, they too are victims of believing in the dream, but they've also transformed themselves because they become the perpetrators of selling that same dream and they believe it so much and they really think oh if you would just put in the ever just follow the plan you're going to be fine but it's really not that simple and everyone who's involved in multi-level marketing overall for the most part most people 
portray that glamorous life, you know, like, look, I'm at the salon, I'm here, I'm doing this. And it's all because of thanks to what was my side hustle. And now, look, I'm doing this full time and life is just great. It's never great. They just want you to think that it is. And the good thing is more and more people are speaking out and people are realizing that all of it's an illusion. It's all one great big huge lie that has been perpetuated for decades. And now let's go ahead and get to the discovery part of this video and then we'll carry on. Jeremy and Jennifer said that Shanann is very consistent and has been doing very well with her Thrive business because she is consistent and follows through. Jeremy said that prior to Shanann starting with Thrive, she and Chris struggled some financially. Jeremy and Jennifer said that Shanann was doing well with Thrive and that the company paid for their car and Shanann won several trips. They said she was somewhat frugal and cut coupons and at one point had a part-time job at Children's Place so she could get a discount. Jennifer said that Shanann and Chris were planning on going to Aspen this weekend and asked McKenna to watch the girls from 1630 hours to 1900 hours on Friday because the person watching the girls over the weekend wasn't available until 1900 hours. What I want to say about this is one, they are clueless about how the car works because you have to keep earning that reward every single month by meeting certain requirements. And they think she is successful because that is the image that Shanann portrayed. And I will have to say, you know, it just seems a little bit odd that, okay, you're so very successful, but yet you're frugal and cutting coupons, which doesn't seem to go with something if you're like wealthy and doing super well, you know what I mean? To start with the unanswered questions, I'm going back to the very beginning and that's with Amway. Who introduced Shanann to multi-level marketing? We don't know. Overall, mainly in the US, multi-level marketing tends to target women, specifically young women and young moms, but honestly, they'll take anyone with a pulse. And you're encouraged to sign up people who already have networks such as Teachers, anyone in the health field, like a nurse, a doctor, a chiropractor, a hairstylist, someone at a medi spa, tanning salon, college cheerleader, college athlete, mechanic, real estate agent, basically anyone who already has clients that they can bring into the MLM to sell the products or to buy the products and then later convince them to join as well. We know her earliest connection is in 2008 with Amway because there's evidence that she was selling Amway's beauty brand called Artistry through 2013. What we don't know is what she bought, how much she spent, if she signed up others under her, or if she made any money. We don't know anything like that. If she did make money, what amount did she actually make after deducting her expenses? Number two, Shanann's and Chris's Lavelle genealogy. In multi-level marketing, the genealogy is the backbone of the compensation plan. It's kind of like a family tree. It provides an historical record of all the members and how they are all connected. Shanann's genealogy would be available in her back office as would Chris's. We never saw what her genealogy looked like, nor were we able to confirm that she had 200 people on her team as mentioned on page 520 of the discovery. In a video, Shanann said that their parents were using Thrive. Does this mean they were signed up as promoters? Did her brother and Chris's sister also become promoters or did they also buy products? Typically, most MLMs will tell you to sign up two people right away, your spouse, partner, sibling, parent, best friend, someone. In discovery, Chris said that he was under Shanann. Now, we do know that Shanann worked Chris's account. He wasn't out there really selling Thrive. It was Shanann doing the work, which is not atypical. It's not unusual whatsoever. Usually that's what happens. And that's what I was planning on doing. That's why I signed my husband up. I was going to work the account and you'll know, build him up a team too. But the bottom line, all of this, we just don't know. Number three, number of retail customers. We don't know the total number of retail customers Shanann had or Chris had, nor do we know 
what those numbers were from month to month because they can vary. And it's likely to go up and down depending on the volume that Shanann needed or Chris needed to hold their rank because all of that is part of keeping that rank so that you're available for different bonuses. Number four, what was the number of these retail customers that were on auto ship each month? The main idea of having retail customers from any MLM is to get them on auto ship. As a distributor in general, you need personal volume points and your team volume also counts depending on, you know, what your rank is and all the associated bonuses. How many of Shanann's and Chris's retail customers were on auto ship? How long did each of these customers stay on auto ship? How many, if any, of these retail customers were converted to Lavelle promoters? Did Shanann encourage retail customers to sign up to receive the discount and be a promoter? According to the pay structure, for Shanann and Chris to receive free product at a minimum, they each needed two customers to enroll in auto ship each and every month. But again, they had to meet other requirements to receive that car bonus and then the team matching bonus. For instance, they would need to help their downline sell enough to have 400 to 800 qualifying volume points. Number five, retail sales outside the network. Did Shanann and Chris have retail sales outside of the Lavelle network, meaning they were actually those retail customers, or were they just selling to people that were in their downline, people who were, you know, on their team? Were they having those customers that were outside of their team? We just don't know. And again, all of that would vary from month to month, because the thing about multi-level marketing it's never consistent. It is completely and utterly inconsistent. You can never count on a particular dollar amount because you don't know what's going to happen from month to month. Number six, personally purchased product each month. How much product was purchased by the Watts each month and from month to month? We don't know. Even if they earned product, because remember, Shanann did those giveaways and she was always doing those mini thrives, that wasn't free. How much product was bought? Sure, we know that they could earn the free product, but that's probably just enough for them to use. So we don't know what that free product really included, if it was just what they needed, or did it include extra stuff? We don't know because we haven't been able to see any of that. Number seven, many thrive experiences. From Shanann's many Facebook lives, she promoted the many thrive experience all the time. How many did Shanann send out each month? Did it vary from month to month? What was the cost for the packaging? What was the cost for the postage? Did she receive this product free or did she pay for it? If she paid for it, how much was she spending on it? If she delivered it in person, how many miles did she drive? How much gas did she use to deliver it? What was the return on investment on all of these mini Thrive experiences she sent out? Number eight, giveaways. Shanann also promoted a lot of giveaways in which she included different products if someone bought Thrive. How much did she spend on the products she gave away? Were those free? I kind of doubt it. How did she get these free products to people? Again, it goes back to the postage and the miles and the driving. What did she do to do all of that? Did she buy the products from Chris's account or under an account and have them delivered to whoever received the bonus? Did she buy the product and have stock in her home that she would then send to the people in mail? We just don't know. Number nine, number of promoters recruited each month. To receive that free Thrive, we know that both Chris and Shanann had to have a minimum of two promoters that signed up underneath them each month. And these promoters needed to be qualified and active. So these promoters needed to have at least 100 personal volume points and remain active with always having those 100 personal volume points. These points can be earned by the promoters purchasing the products or by retail sales. So how many people did Shanann recruit each month? How many did she place under Chris's account? Was she running an account for anyone else like her parents, his parents, or their siblings? 
It would take a lot of work to run her downline and Chris's, but if anyone in their family was also receiving income from Lavelle, someone would need to make sure that, you know, everything was going cohesively, you know? Did their extended family take part in Lavelle? And if so, to what degree? Number 10, personal volume. Shanann was at the 80K rank. The qualifying volume she needed, and you can kind of think of it as teen volume, she needed 80,000 points. And on her strong leg, the max amount of points that she needed was 48,000. She also needed four legs in her genealogy. Now, Chris, he was either at 12K or at 40K. And for both of those ranks, you need two legs. But the volume you need is the same as what the rank is. So Chris needed 12,000 points or 40,000 points. And on his strong leg, the max when he was at a 12,000 VIP rank was 7,200 qualifying volume points. If he was at the 40,000 VIP rank, then he needed 24,000 as a max on his strong leg. And I know the strong leg, weak leg thing is kind of weird if you haven't been in MLM, but just kind of hang with me. So they needed each 100 personal volume points. Did they get those personal volume points from the free product they earned or did they need to purchase product themselves to have that 100 points that they were required to have? They have to always be considered active. So they always needed that 100 PV, which could be earned either through their purchases or through the retail sales, like customers outside of the network. Number 11, total volume. How many volume points were generated in total by Shanann's team and Chris's team? each month? What bonuses did they qualify for each month based off of these volume points? 12. Team commission matching bonus. Did Shanann and Chris receive team commission matching bonus each month? And if so, how were the qualifications met? If any of their family members had promoter accounts, did Shanann make purchases under those accounts to receive points? Was there any sort of manipulation going on to make sure that they were getting the points that they needed so that they could get the bonuses they wanted? Number 13, the car bonus. How many months consecutively did both Shanann and Chris earn the car bonus? How many months did they not earn it? In a post, Shanann states the number of months, but we don't have anything that verifies what she claimed. Again, access to her back office would have this information. How much did they earn each month in that car bonus? Did the amount go up and down? Number 14, local events. Now there's going to be costs there. Did she have to pay to like rent out a space? Was she using it for lead generation? If so, how many promoters did she get out of those leads? Did people sign up right then and there to become a promoter? Did she get retail customers from these local events? How many sales were made because she held a local event? How many local events did she have each month? How many did she have annually? Number 15, Thrive Trips. Now, allegedly, you can win trips, those um, getaways that they're called. But there's also going to be personal costs associated with it. For instance, when you go to one of those, you know, conferences, it's the annual conference, you got to have a ticket. What was the cost of those tickets? Or did they get those free? Was there some way that they won the tickets? What about those getaway trips? Were all the expenses included? Or did they need to do something like pay for their food? Was there Lavelle gear there? And then they bought Lavelle gear because we've seen Shanann in a lot of Lavelle shirts. We've seen Chris in Lavelle hats. So what was going on? What was the actual cost of these trips? How much was free and how much did they pay for? Number 16, calls per month. Every month when you're in MLM and sometimes every week, sometimes every day, you'll have, you know, team calls with your upline or with your own team. How many calls were going on? How much time did Shanann spend on all of those calls for her team and for Chris's team and maybe for anybody else's team if she was running any other account that one of their family members had? How many calls per month were there in total that she did? And how much time did she spend on each of those calls? Number 17, and you know what? Odd numbers bother me, and this is 17, so it 
bugging me that I can't think of like 18 off the top of my head, but you know, there might be some other things that will come to me at another time. And so if I do think of more things, I'll make a part two, but the 17th one is personal development. That would include books, courses, masterminds, anything like a paid group, anything where there's an associated cost. Now I would think since Shanann had been in multi-level marketing since 2008, she might have reread some of the same books, but maybe she went and got other ones. Maybe she got audio books. We don't know exactly what she was doing for that. And we don't know how much time she devoted. I so wish Shanann could have seen that being part of LaFell, being part of multi-level marketing, was not giving her the life she wanted and never would. The discovery document said she traveled every other month for Lavelle. That's a lot. And by doing all that traveling, it would mean that the dream she believed in would be regrounded in her each time, you know, she would go on these trips because you're all around those like-minded people and it would make her work harder and harder towards her end goal. When I was in an MLM, I did a lot of live streams myself. Oh, that's something I didn't include. Okay, number 18. How many live streams did she do a day? How many did she do a week? How much time was spent on that? Did she plan them? Did she do anything in advance to come up with ideas? I mean, these still come up in my Facebook memories and um, I keep them there as reminders to be teachable moments. I asked my husband how he would have felt if I asked him to do lives with me like all the time with Beachbody. And I, let me just say, he wasn't keen on that. And Beachbody, just so you know, was my MLM of choice. Overall, my husband told me it just wouldn't go well, you know, it just wouldn't. And that's something that I thought about as I was making this video. Typically, when someone is involved in MLM, one partner is like all in and the other one, not so much. And then there are usually expectations that you'll have for the partner to quote unquote support you. Me being involved in multi-level marketing definitely hit our pocketbook. Not as much as I think it did to Shanann's, but there are plenty of women right now who are involved in multi-level marketing portraying that they have the life of their dreams and because the pandemic has not just vanished, there are a lot of vulnerable people being drawn into the dream. The dream is a fantasy, and for many, it is a nightmare. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate it. And remember, you're beautiful, and I love you.